how fast the, the days of Ramadan have passed. Only a few days ago, it feels just like a few days ago that we were looking forward to Ramadan, welcoming this wonderful guest, welcoming this beautiful opportunity, this peak time of connection and devotion and closeness and spirituality and sweetness of Iman. We were looking forward to it. And in the blink of an eye, today or the next few days, we will be saying a goodbye to Ramadan. And this is how your life and my life will pass. Before you know it, you'll start having white hairs just like myself and like many of us here. Soon your hair will start falling off. Soon you'll start getting wrinkles. And soon you'll be too old. Too old to start planning for your life ahead. This is how life passes and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes it as a mirage. وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ This life is a passing, fleeting enjoyment. It's a mirage. It's a delusion. So you go through it as a preparation to make it to the hereafter. It's your opportunity. It's the chance given for you so that you make it to paradise. But we get so much work. You know, we get ourselves worked up. We get ourselves busy trying to plan for our future and we forget that there's no future on earth. There's no real future on earth. The only future is in the hereafter and the next life. You know it in your heart because when you were born, it was placed and put in your heart, in your very fabric, your very makeup, your fitrah, your, your, your human nature knows it. You're not created for this world. You're not part of this world. You're just a visitor. And soon you will be departing. And Ramadan is a reminder. It, is, it has come. And soon it is departing. And it will leave us. And in Ramadan there will be winners and there will be losers. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us from among the winners. My khutbah today will be about no matter what you've done in the past days, we still have about five days to go. Five days to go or four days to go. Don't miss out on them. Don't miss out on them. Don't let the fact that you have wasted your time, the fact that you have not given your all in Ramadan, don't let that dissuade you from making use of the last five or four nights of Ramadan. Make sure you give everything you have to Allah in these remaining nights. And the Prophet ﷺ has given us an example in Sahih, in the hadith reported by Muslim in his Sahih. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, إِنَّ الرَّجُلَ لَيَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ النَّارِ حَتَّى مَا يَكُونُ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَهَا ذِرَاعَ فَيَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ الْجِنَّةِ فَيَدْخُلَهَا That a person will be doing throughout his life the actions of the people of the hellfire. The people who will end up in the eternal punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until he gets so close to the hellfire that's only one hand span or one arm's length he's, he's only away from the hellfire by that short distance then the word of Allah comes true the word of Allah takes place and that's the word of Allah in his book in the Mahfuz, that is written about everything that was going to happen that was written 50,000 years before the creation of the heavens and the earth and it was also written in your heart because when you were in the womb of your mother, Allah sent down an angel that wrote where you were going to end up. And there's no force upon you. There's no compulsion upon you. This is just the, Allah's knowledge of the unseen. Allah's knowledge of the future, what you were going to do, where you were going to end up. So the angel will write, will you be from the people of the hellfire or the people of paradise? So it was written also in your heart where you will be. But Allah has given you, in the first place, the fitrah. The fitrah that knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fitrah that loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fitrah that recognizes paradise. The fitrah that recognizes the fleeting nature of this world. It recognizes it. It knows it. It is the feeling of guilt that creeps on you when you break the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the pain that keeps poking you in your heart when you focus in your life about the enjoyment of this world and you forget about Allah. You forget about the reason you were created to love Allah, connect to Allah, live for Allah. And that's the only time 
You'll be able to connect with your true human nature, the, the pristine nature that, that you were made according to. And the Quran comes to confirm this. The Quran comes to fortify this and strengthen it and push you towards it. So inside, from outside comes the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The example of our great Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In all its details. And from inside comes the blueprint. Comes the very fabric of who you are. Your fitrah. All of them are in a state of compatibility. They are exactly the same. So you need to listen to that. So as Ramadan is leaving, you, it needs to remind you that you will be leaving soon as well. How soon? Even a hundred years from now will be very soon. What is a hundred years compared to an eternal life in paradise or hellfire? And the Messenger وسلم, told us about the, most, the person who lives, lived the most extravagant, the most easy life on earth, he will be brought on the Day of Judgment and he will be dipped in the hellfire for less than a second, just dipped in the hellfire. Then Allah will ask him, my servant, have you ever witnessed any ease, any luxury in your life? And he will say, no Allah, by your majesty and your greatness, I've never seen any ease in my life. Just one dip made him forget everything that he enjoyed on earth. And then the most miserable person on earth, the person who lived the hardest, toughest type of life on earth will be brought on the Day of Judgment. And he will be dipped in paradise. You might say the hellfire, it's burning, so one dip actually makes a difference. What about paradise? We often feel that we need to take time to enjoy the bliss and the beauty and the ease, right? We need to adjust to it. But the beauty of paradise is something different. It's not part of this world. It's something that your mind cannot understand, but your heart can recognize. Your fitrah knows it. And that's the sweetness you feel when you're reciting the words of Allah and you truly connect to them. And you're surprised by some tears rolling down your cheeks. Because it's awakened your heart. It's the moment when you're praying behind the Imam and he's reciting the words of Allah and you feel you want to cry your heart out. You have a feeling of coming back home. Coming back to yourself. That's your fitrah. That's what the Qur'an does. This, this is what the words of Allah do. They take us back in a journey. Take us back home. Take, take us to who we are. And this is what Islam calls people to. It doesn't, Islam doesn't strive to change people, transform them. This is not the right way to put it. Islam brings us back home. Islam wants you to be true to yourself. Because your very nature, your very nature is a nature of belief of love for Allah, of connection to Allah. And, so, and once you go back home, once you connect to your true nature, you will see the world differently. You will connect to the whole system, the whole current of worship that runs through the universe. And you will recognize it and you will feel it. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when I love my servant, my servant seeks nearness to me. And I love my servant. I will make everything work for him. Because once you connect with the universe in the worship of Allah, in the devotion of Allah, in the love of Allah, you're part of this universal harmony, the mizan that Allah sent down to run the whole universe. And all, only mankind and jinn are given choice to break from it. So once you choose to connect to it, Islam doesn't want to make your life hard. Islam actually makes, makes your life easy. If you feel that the rulings of Islam are making your life hard, you're doing it the wrong way. You're doing it from the wrong place. You're trying to do it with your mind, with your intelligence, with your, with your intelligent mind. But you're not connecting to your true nature. When your heart recognizes the beauty of Islam and connects to it and opens up to it, you will look at life from a different perspective. Things will just sound differently. Everything, you'll see the glory of Allah in everything. You will see the mercy of Allah in everything. You will see the wisdom of Allah in everything. So what can we learn from Ramadan as it's departing us and leaving us? First, a reminder. Those people who did not give their best in Ramadan so far, it's not over yet. It's not over yet, just as, as in that hadith. If in the last part, you show Allah some sincerity, some truthfulness, some devotion that you truly love Allah. Allah will accept from you. 
And Allah might, might make it up for you as if you have worked hard throughout Ramadan. Just as He would send that person who throughout his life did the evil sins, but the last bit of his life he turned back to Allah and Allah sent him to paradise. This is how forgiving Allah is. This is how merciful He is. It's not mathematics with Allah. All you need to do is to show true love and devotion. And if you're truly sincere with Allah, Allah will guide you. If when you pray, you say to Allah, اهدنا الصراط المستقيم You say it from your heart, Oh Allah, guide me to the straight path. Keep me on the straight path. اهدنا الصراط المستقيم If you truly mean it, if you truly mean it from the bottom of your heart, you're not saying it only with your tongue. You're not just thinking about it in your mind. You just feel it. Your whole body, your whole gut, your whole soul is saying it. And you mean it from the bottom of your heart. Allah will never let you down. He will never let you down. And if you think otherwise, you don't have the right thoughts about Allah. That's not Allah who created us. That's not Allah who sent Muhammad وسلم, with the Quran for our guidance. And he said, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have only sent you as mercy to mankind. So put your trust in Allah. Show Allah some truthfulness. Just between you and Allah, you don't have to show anyone. Forget about everyone else. This business, no one has anything to do with it. It's only you and Allah. Don't show it to anyone. Make sure that it's only between you and Allah. Experience that moment, that beauty of only connecting to Allah and forgetting about the creation, it's a different feeling. And the Prophet ﷺ gave a, a beautiful example of someone who's really truthful to Allah, how Allah will guide them. There was one companion, he had a weakness in him. He was a bit of a distant companion. He had a weakness in him that he would drink alcohol. He could not break from it. He was addicted to it. So every time he was brought to the Prophet ﷺ to, in order to have the punishment for drinking alcohol. So one day, one of, the people, one of the congregation looked at him and he said, May Allah curse him, or may Allah distance him. How often he's brought to the Prophet ﷺ to be punished. The Messenger ﷺ said, لا تلعنوه. Don't curse him. Don't swear at him. لا تعينوا الشيطان على أخيكم. Don't be an aid for shaitan, with shaitan against your brother. إِنَّهُ يُحِبُّ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ Indeed, he loves Allah and his messenger. Some people get the hadith wrong. They say, as long as you love Allah, your sins are all forgiven. It's not necessarily like that. But what the Prophet ﷺ meant as the scholars of hadith, the commentators of hadith on, on this hadith said, they said that his love, his true love for Allah and his messenger will wake him up one day and will make him break from it. So if you're truly sincere with Allah, if you truly love Allah, Allah will not let you down. But you need to grow that love. You need to manifest that love. You need to do your best to make it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So make sure the last night, alhamdulillah, I believe most, it's, it's a long weekend, so most of you are not working. What, what else do you have to do? When else? You know the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one time he mounted the member, and we know the famous hadith, and just before mounting the member, he said, Ameen. Ameen, Ameen, three times. His companions were puzzled. You know, that's the first time the Prophet ﷺ does that. What does he mean? So afterwards they asked him, they said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, you did something you, you don't usually do. What, did you, what did you mean? He said, Jibreel came to me and he said, three duas. One of them was, Man adraka Ramadana wa lam yukhfar lahu fabu'dan lah. The one who lives to witness the month of Ramadan and does not get his sins forgiven in Ramadan. So may Allah distance him from his mercy. What does that mean? That means this is a golden opportunity. That's the best time in the year to get your sins forgiven. You haven't got them forgiven. What are you doing? That's the time you're most likely to get your sins forgiven. You miss out on it. You can't afford to do it. And who's making the dua? The best of the angels, Jibreel. And the best of the creation, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You think this dua will not be answered? So it's not late yet. It's not over. You have these last nights. You have the qiyam. Come to the qiyam. When you make your fast, make sure you're doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For Allah himself. A lot of us do it out of habit. We're just so much used to it. I'm just, I'm just fasting, I'm just going through the motions. That's not how fasting should be. 
Fasting is so spiritual. <coughs> it's so spiritual. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Illa siyam fa innahu li wa ana ajzibih. All the actions for the son of Adam are belong they belong to him. His re the reward is for him, except for fasting. Fasting is for me. Allah is saying fasting is for me and I will give reward for it. He didn't even name the reward. Because it's immense, it's great, it's powerful. Why? Because it's, it's a profound experience. And the Messenger ﷺ said in the hadith also reported by a Muslim, he said, Inna Allah la yanzuru ila suwarikum wa ajsamikum. Allah does not look at how you look, uh, your looks, how you look, your appearance. Allah doesn't look at how nicely you dress, how nicely you speak. How nicely you behave, or about your impression management. He's not so much concerned about this. But Allah looks at your hearts. Your hearts. Your hearts. And this is why Shaykh al Islam al Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy upon him. He says the main wisdom and the main point behind all the acts of worship that you see is their impact on the heart. That's the point behind all the acts of worship. They are so important, you have to observe them. But the gist of them is what happens to your heart. What you experience in your heart. Are you experiencing the beauty and the devotion and the connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or are you just going through the motions? So make sure you do this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll share with you certain things just to walk out of Ramadan this year triumphant. Make sure this Ramadan will be able to change you. And even if you have not done your best in the past few days, as I said, you still have the time and you can do it. It's achievable. And I said, it's with Allah, it's not math. It's different. There's a different mathematics with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Completely different kind of intelligence. Completely different kind of logic. It's the quality. Abdullah ibn Umar, the son of Umar ibn Khattab, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, he died at the age around 84. When he was about 83, he said to his son Salim, he said, Oh my son, you know, if I know that Allah has accepted from me one sajda in my life, one, just one sujood, one prostration, I would have no desire to stay with you in this world, oh people. I would just want to go and leave. Only one sajda. The, the thing that is keeping me in this life is keep trying to make a sajda that Allah would accept. And that doesn't mean Allah doesn't accept our worship, but He's talking about a higher level of acceptance, about the quality of that sajda, about the inner experience as you are performing that sajda. And that's what Allah wants to see from you. Show Allah some devotion. So show Allah truthfulness. Show Allah love and dedication. And you don't have to fake it. You don't have to make it up. You're born with it. It's in your heart. You just have to tap into it and bring it out. And experience it, and you are going to enjoy it the most. And that's the sweetness of Iman. This is where it comes from. So I'll share with you certain things that inshallah will make you or will help you and assist you. No one can make you, by the way, change. No one, no one can make you a better person. The most important thing about the creation of man is choice. 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 Your essence is about choice. You make the choice where you're going to go in life. You want to be truthful to Allah? Oh, you want to waste your life. It's your choice. Even if I try hard, I can't change you. You try hard, you can't even change your children. You can do all you want. But ultimately, they will have to make a decision. They will have to... Choice is the essence of human life. But these tools can help us, inshallah, change and benefit from, this, from these days in, in Ramadan. Help take your life to the next level. I'm not talking only in rela your relationship with Allah. Once you correct and you rectify your relationship with Allah, this life will serve you. This life will serve you and people who trust know it. The thing is that if you don't trust, you can't see it. You have to trust to see it. You have to experience it when you... You have to experience it to believe it. Because from where you are, if you're acting from your conditioning, your cultural conditioning, your upbringing, most of the cultures around the world, if you're acting from that platform, you can't see it. You can't experience it. You have to cross over and experience it and you will see it's a different logic, different dynamics. But you were holding yourself back because you were not trusting, you were not surrendering to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first thing you need to do is to start truly thinking about your story with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My question to you is what is your story with Allah? What is it? What's the summary of your story with Allah? Because your life is actually your story with Allah. 
What is the word? What is, what is the statement that summarizes your life, your experience on earth? What is it? Is it one of love? Is it one of devotion? Is it truthfulness? Is it negligence? Is it heedlessness? Is it corruption? Is it deception? Is it naive hope in Allah while engaging in sin? Or is it just love for Allah? Is it just truthfulness? Being true to Allah, true to yourself, true to the creation? Is it about kindness and about mercy just like the life of the Prophet ﷺ? Because Allah summarized his mission and his life as mercy to mankind. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have sent you only as a mercy, but a mercy to mankind. That's the summary of the life of the, of the Prophet ﷺ. What's this? That's his story with Allah. What is your story with Allah? And if you don't have a clear story, start building it. Building it on love and devotion and, and, and compassion and kindness to the creation of Allah and openness to the words of Allah. And this takes me to my second point. Is what is your story with the Quran? A lot of us recite the Quran with our tongues. But it never touches our hearts. It never awakens our fitrah. It never awakens our souls. It never connects us to Allah. And I understand some people, they need to work hard on the Quran and because of the lack of the Arabic language, because of the lack of the understanding, because of technical issues. These are merely a bridge. But you need to give some time for your heart to reflect on the Quran and that's the meaning of tadabbur. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says clearly, states clearly why he sent down the Quran. He said, kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarak. A, a book that we have sent to you as a blessed book. So that they make tadabbur of its verses, of its signs. And tadabbur means you open your mind, you open your mind and re you reflect. And most people stop at that stage. That stage is a bridge to let the Quran delve into your heart and awaken your fitrah. Awaken the love of Allah inside you and that's what tadabbur means because tadabbur means letting the Quran reach its final stages with you. Letting the Quran give you the ultimate meanings that are behind tadabbur is from dabr in Arabic. Tadabbur. That's the meaning of the word tadabbur. So you need to live with the Quran. You, let, you need to let, leave, let the Quran speak to your heart. Most of us are busy with the technical stuff of the Qur'an, that's great as a bridge. But that's not the whole story, that's part of the process. You need to let the Qur'an shape you. If the Qur'an does not shape you, you don't have a good relationship with it. If it does not specify what kind of person you are, that's not a, that's not a good sign. Aisha radiallahu anha was asked about the Prophet wasallam. How was he? How was his demeanor? What kind of person was he? The best word she found, she said, his demeanor, his character was the Qur'an itself manifested. Are you a manifestation of the Qur'an? Because deep inside you, you are created compatible with the Qur'an. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Teen, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمُ We've created man in the best shape. And a lot of us think it's the physical shape. What about your spiritual shape? What about your emotional shape? What about your intellectual shape? What about the whole systems within you, tangible and intangible? What about those? Those are perfect as well. When you were born, you were born upon the fitrah, upon the truth, upon the love of Allah. And it stays within you. And it keeps reminding you about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you need, need to build your story with Allah. And the second point is one of the best tools to do this. Build your story with the Qur'an. What's your relationship with the Qur'an? Is, is the Qur'an your friend? Take the Qur'an as a friend because the Qur'an takes a life of its own. It's the words of Allah. It takes a life of its own when you connect your heart to it. It doesn't stop at the stage of being an intellectual endeavor. It becomes a holistic experience. It's a profound experience. It elevates every part of your being. So you need to, you need to let it awaken you. And these are two things, if you start doing these, and they're very simple things, and very easy, and that's your very nature. You're not doing something strange to you. You're not doing something that is forced upon you. That's your very nature. If you were left with your own nature, this is the way you would follow.
the way of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions, رضي الله عنهم, أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد. So you need to build your story with Allah subhanahu wa taala. Make it clear. The time you wake up in the morning, make sure that you live your, your day for Allah. That you live this day for Allah, no matter what you're doing, you can do it for the sake of Allah. But make sure you begin your day with Allah. He's number one in your life. And the best way to do this is to pick up the Quran, the Mus'haf, and read. You might say, some of you might say, I don't understand it. Just read it. Read one page and surrender. Don't try to be smart with it. Don't try to be very intelligent with it. Just read these, feel that these are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you have an access to a good translation, read the meanings so that you can reflect on the meanings. And ask yourself the question as Imam Ibn al-Qayyim always says in so many places in his books. He says you need to take each verse and let it speak to your heart and say what is the message in this, in this verse for me? What is, the, what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala conveying to me in this verse? What is in it for me in this verse? What is in it for me? What can I take from it? Build that. You will be surprised, I'm telling you, you'll be surprised how each verse comes to life. It takes a life of its own and it speaks to you. And this is why Imam al Hassan al Basri, he said a very profound statement. So profound and so powerful that a lot of us misinterpret. He used to say that we used to make tafakkur, and tafakkur is basically reflecting and thinking on the creation of Allah, on the words of Allah, the signs of Allah, regardless whether they are the words of Allah or the creation of Allah. We used to engage in tafakkur, and this tafakkur led us to tadakkur. What is tadakkur? Tadakkur, a lot of us misunderstand it. Imam, Imam Shaykh Islam in Taymiyyah, he says, tadakkur means remembering. So what does it mean? The Quran refers to itself in the Quran so many times. Most of the time as what? Dhikr, dhikra, tadkira. It all comes from the same root. What does it mean? Remember, remind, remember. Remind you of what? You only remember something you already know. And that's your fitrah. Your knowledge of Allah, your love of Allah. So the Quran reminds you of your true nature. It reminds you of the love of Allah that's already instilled in your heart. As the hadith also reported by a Muslim from the companion Hadith from Yaman, the Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّ الْأَمَانَةَ تَنَزَلَتْ فِي جَذْرِ قُلُوبِ الرِّجَالِ ثُمَّ عَلِمُوا مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ ثُمَّ عَلِمُوا مِنَ السُنَّةِ Amana, which is the fitrah. The truth, the true religion of Islam was placed at the deepest recesses of the hearts of the human beings. Then they came to know from the Quran, then they came to know from the Sunnah. The commentators on Sahih Muslim like Imam Nawawi, he said that shows that people are believers by nature. That we have the love and knowledge of Allah already in our hearts. Then the Quran comes to awaken it and nourish it and grow it. Then the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu comes to nourish it and enhance it and give it clear manifestations. So that's what you need to do. So Imam al-Hassan al-Basri says, this tafakkur led us to tadakkur. So we came back home sort of. And this tadakkur led us to more tafakkur because it gave us more insight, deeper insight. So we started developing more insight and doing more tafakkur. And that's your journey with the Quran. You'll be surprised when you give the Quran your heart how many meanings will open up? Abu Sulaiman al-Darani, may Allah have mercy upon him. One of the early generations, he said, Wallahi, sometimes I pray at night. And for four nights, I'm reciting the same verse. I can't go past it. One verse, I can't go past it. Because I'm enjoying it. And so many meanings, floods of meaning are coming my way that I can't disengage from it and move on to the next one. So for four, four nights, I'm just, he used to pray the whole night. The whole four nights I'm repeating the same verse and getting so many, so much insight and meanings and connection and love and sweetness that I can't go move on to the next one. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows his mercy upon me, he just lets me take a moment of heedlessness and just jump on to the next one. Otherwise I'll be stuck with this verse for the rest of my life. That's, that's the relationship with the Quran. It's quality, it's not quantity. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, or Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anh said, if I recite two verses, and I engage in them, and I reflect on their meanings, and I benefit from them, it's better for me than reciting the whole Qur'an. Just like this, heaven, so quickly, just to finish it. It's quality that Allah wants your heart through these actions. 
This is what Allah wants from us. So that Hassan al-Basri said, we used to make tafakkur. Tafakkur led us to tadakkur, to remembering. Tadakkur led us to a higher level of tafakkur. And so on and so forth. And we used to alternate between the two and go in this kind of upward spiral. And listen to this. Until we started speaking to our hearts, and that doesn't mean speaking like talking to the hearts, but basically that's engaging with the heart through tafakkur, reflection on the words of Allah, on the creation of Allah, and awakening the fitra more. And we would engage with our hearts until our hearts spoke out to us. And lo and behold, This is his statement. And we engage our hearts until our hearts spoke out to us. Lo and behold, it turned out that hearts have eyes with which they can see and ears with which they can hear. They have a life of their own. And that's the life of the muqarrabin. These are the people that are closest to Allah in the highest ranks of paradise. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from among those people. So I would summarize. Make sure, make sure that you seize these last remaining days. Do your best. Especially experience that in your heart. Give Allah quality. Make sure you give Allah your best. Because He deserves more. Make sure that your heart is with everything you're doing for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make sure that from now on, you develop a relationship with Allah. That, so you are aware of Allah every day. You, you are aware that every day you're writing down your story with Allah. And that's the story you will see on the day of judgment on your records. And you will be held to account according to that story. You're writing it, whether you like it or not. Day in and day out, you're writing it and the angels are recording it. It's a story. It's a lifetime. And you will be held to account based on it. So make it a beautiful story. Make it a story of love, a story of devotion, a story of, of, of contribution. A story that's full with beautiful meanings that you would love to read on the Day of Judgment and see. And in order to do this, the Qur'an is your best aid, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's nothing like them for the heart. There's nothing like them for the soul. There's nothing like them as a way of life. So build a personal relationship with the Qur'an, even if it's one verse. Even if it's one verse, just take your time with it. Bring it to life through your heart's connection. Bring it to life, engage in it. And realize that Allah did not send just random words. Allah sent profound words that are supposed to awaken us. This is why Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِمَانًا مِنْ ذِيسِ The verses of Allah are related to them, are recited to them. It increased them in faith. And Allah says about the believers, الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ The ones when, the, when Allah is mentioned, the hearts tremble. Why? Because they know Allah inside. It reminds them of that beauty, of that greatness of Allah. So they connect to it. It awakens in the heart. So their bodies go through this kind of shivering. That profound experience. The words of Allah can give you that, but only if you give them your heart. You give the words of Allah, they will give you back. You give them just your tongue, that's all you're going to hear, just sounds, sound bites. Give them your heart, they will give you profound meanings that will change your life. It's not intellectual knowledge only, it's something that's more profound, something that will grab you, something that will hold you by the collar and will take you to the, to the truth.